What was the hardest thing about growing up for you? Um, being lied to about what my nationality was. Um, not knowing that I had siblings until I got to be a certain age. You know what I mean? What were you told that your nationality was? White. I was lied to about a lot of things. Um... I was told one thing and then another thing and I just, you know, I just didn't fit in, you know, and I was in and out of um, other places after, you know, I was 18 and did a family genealogy research and found out there was Mormons, Catholics, Jews, um, Baptists and all that in my family. So my family is basically a, a my family is basically a blended family. Did you get into a lot of trouble when you were a kid? I wouldn't say getting into a lot of trouble. I was basically trying to stay out of trouble, and people always started picking fights with me, and I just stood up for myself, and people took that as something else. You mentioned juvenile hall. How old were you when you first entered that life? Oh my gosh! Which years? I guess the first. I was in. I was in. I was in two different ones. I was one in Fort Wayne and one in um, Valparaiso. Let's talk about your first time entering juvenile hall. What got you there? Um, tell you the truth, I don't remember. What was it like? What do you remember it being like? They gave me clothes that were too tight. The girls there were, oh my gosh, I don't even want to describe them. Trifling. One even smells like fish and had a bad yeast infection. And I had to sit next to her and everybody thought I was the one with the problem. Oh God, it was awful, okay? Were there guards that were doing things to the younger inmates that they probably shouldn't have been doing? Um, well, there was a few times there was fights and the, they would just slam the kids on the ground, almost busting their freaking heads. And then they tried putting their hands on me and they nearly broke my freaking arm. I want to take it slow because your story is very uh, interesting. And once again, thank you for sharing it. I do appreciate it. Um, we have Care Bear on the line today, and she's talking to us about her time in the system, growing up, foster care, and I uh, hope you all pay attention. Um, all right, so you you uh, go to juvenile hall. You are, are at that point of your your life, are you in and out of of facilities? You know, mental facilities. Uh, yeah, foster care, everything. I was in and out of my adoptive parent house. Um, I would run away from my adoptive mom, my adoptive parents' house to go right across town in Angola. I used to run away in the middle of the night and take off, go on from the east side to the west side area where my aunt used to live. What was over and there? And I would, and um, it only took me like one or two hours to get there. How old were you at this time? It was only about maybe, it was a little after, around, shoot. It was around the time that my doctor sister came into the picture at three years old. So you're, you're nine years old going way clear across town. Yep. Oh boy. And I used to, and then, yeah, I started running away at a very young age. It was either you know me getting away from somebody and me going off on somebody or me just wanting to you know keep myself safe from hurting anybody you know what I'm talking about yeah for sure and I was pretty much independent whenever I was adopted I was already already had my own mindset I already had my own attitude. People were trying to change me into what they wanted me to be. 
look what they wanted me to be, be what they wanted me to be, dress how they wanted me to be, act the way they wanted me to be, you name it. And I just couldn't handle it. I'm like, you know what? Well, how come they just, uh, why, how come they just didn't adopt a baby? Mold, mold a baby, you know, to somebody that they wanted. So with all of this going on in your life, Care Bear, were you able to graduate high school? I graduated in 1998. Three months before I turned 18, I got jumped one or two grades because supposedly they got my grades mixed up or whatever. And I only and I almost became a 16 year old high school dropout. So during all of these hardships you were facing, it sounds like you were still able to keep up with your schoolwork. I had to go to summer school um, unwillingly. I didn't want to. It was either in at Crossroads Children's Home. I actually had to go to summer school. I have a job. I had a job. I quit, but they said I got fired. And then I had another job. I had like two or three jobs when I was there and then it was awful. I mean, you don't push a 16 year old into having a job. You don't push a 16 or 17 year old into having a job if you know, they're not ready. Yeah. You, you just don't do that. Tell us what life was like around that time, around your, your high school graduation and your, Enter, your internship into adulthood what was that time like for you around 17 18 um well well everybody was doing algebra i was a, basically doing basic math um i was just introduced to computers the end of the typing class and everybody was you know doing a few pages of the book i was halfway through the book I only I could look at the book and know where all the keys were without looking on the keys. So you know, there, I had certain subjects I was good at, some I wasn't. You know, some I was interested in. You, you know how it is. I just couldn't wait to get out of school and say screw it. <laughs> <laughs> Put my high school diploma. Let everybody be proud of me. Well, I don't think very many people were proud of me because they wanted me to go to college and stuff. And I don't think God had it in, in his plans for me to be in college.